number 14 asks, the best leaper in the animal kingdom is the puma, which can jump to a height of 3.7 meters when leaving the ground at an angle of 45 degrees. With what speed must the animal leave the ground to reach that height? Okay, so here's what we have going on. We have our super kitty right here, and they jump at 45 degrees. So what is 45 degrees telling us? It's telling us that the amount of force that they put into their upward motion equals the amount of force that they put into their uh, their um, horizontal motion. And so it's, we've been given enough information to find the upward motion. So once we find the upward motion um, from here to here, then we can find the horizontal motion from here to here, and we can use that to solve our, our result, the resultant vector. And so what does it give us to tell us um, the upward motion? Well, it tells us the height. So the change in y equals 3.7 meters. And so um, we know that the acceleration of gravity equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that our uh, final velocity equals zero, at, and whenever it reaches its highest um, point, its um, its upward velocity is zero. Its left to right velocity can still be moving, but its upward velocity, we're saying at that point, is zero, and so then it would start having negative velocity going back down. We don't know the initial velocity, and we don't know the amount of time. So we're going to use those two components to solve the initial, oh, excuse me, we're going to use um, formulas that we know to solve for the initial velocity. First thing we want to talk about is, it says that it goes up at a 45 degree angle, and what, like I said, we already said that that's saying that the upward is equal to the, um, to the uh, horizontal. So... So any time um, for this first part that we're talking about VI, we're really talking about VI of the y-axis, the initial velocity of the y-axis. Any time we're talking about VF, uh, we're talking about the VF of the y-axis. So we're only talking about the upward um, portion of this. And the reason I say that is because um, we're going to come to an answer. It's going to it's going to take a, a little bit of time to get to an answer, and we need to remember that that's only the upward portion of it. Okay, so with that much said, let's go ahead and get started. We will know that our distance, our change in y, our, our change in um, change in y equals 3.7 meters. And we have, um, so let's go ahead and write out some basic formulas. So if we know our final velocity minus our initial velocity um, divided by our time, that's our formula for acceleration. So the change in velocity over time is acceleration. And from that, we can we can derive a uh, a formula because we know that the final velocity is zero. We know what the acceleration is. So there's only two things that we really don't know. That's the initial velocity and the time. And so let's solve for initial velocity since that's what we're really looking for. So it's negative v uh, uh, negative initial velocity equals a t minus final velocity equals acceleration times time minus final velocity. Since our final velocity is zero, we can just cross it all out. So um, negative vel uh, initial velocity equals at, or I could say initial velocity equals negative at. So if we could just find out the time, we could solve for our initial velocity, which is what the question is asking us for. So, how do we solve for time? Well, there's another formula that includes time that doesn't include acceleration, so that's the key. We want to find a formula that does include time that doesn't include acceleration. And so that would be our average velocity to distance formula. So, um, average velocity um, divided by time. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not divided by time, so let me undo that. Average velocity times time equals our change in y or our distance, our displacement. 
Well, what is average velocity? Let's define it. Average velocity, if you remember, was the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2 times time equals our change in y. Well, we want to get rid of um, time. In our original equation, we want to find a way to get rid of that and put it in terms that we know. <clears throat> so, we can solve for time. And the way we do that is we put that our change in y, or our distance, divided by our, our, well, divided by this, so that would end up equaling times 2 on the top, divided by the initial velocity, plus the final velocity. And again, so that equals time. Again, the final velocity equals 0. So, our change in time, or our time, equals our change in distance, or our total, our magnitude of distance, times 2, divided by the initial velocity. So again, we take that and we plug it in here. So I got vi equals a times, instead of t, I put change in y times 2, divided by initial velocity. So um, this is a, looks like an, a funky 9. So we can we can uh, distribute the a so vi equals and actually this is negative a the vi equals negative a change of y times two divided by vi so I, I times both sides by vi and I get vi squared equals negative a times my change of y times two. So now I can plug in some numbers and solve my initial velocity. So the initial uh, acceleration is negative 9.8. So negative of that is positive 9.8 times, and went 3.7 meters times 2 equals velocity squared. So V, uh, initial velocity equals, uh, V initial velocity squared equals 72 point five two that's meters squared per second squared so we find the square root of that and the initial velocity equals eight let me redraw my eight eight point five one five eight six eight so that's the initial velocity upward and remember I said it's going at a at a an angle so the upward velocity is the same as the over velocity so now I know that this is both my up velocity and my over velocity um, so that's the uh, that's velocity vector 1 plus uh, velocity vector 2 equals 2 times this or uh, not necessarily up let's go through that again so my velocity for up was 8.515 and my velocity for over is 8.515 so if my up and my over equal that then I can use the Pythagorean theorem and do the square root of 2 times 8.515 squared there so 2 times that squared, the square root of it, and we get that our resultant vector has an initial velocity of 12.04326 meters per second.